In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the secrets to making your projects look like this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm going to teach you how to do this really creative stitch. Now you're looking at it thinking to yourself, okay, few assumptions. Mikey, I do not want to trim yarn each and every time. You're not going to trim yarn. You're going to carry it forward as you're going throughout the stitch. Now what's more interesting is that we're going to be using and building stitches on top of each other when we go to do it. So if you look really carefully you can see that it starts off here. We're bearing some of it here and then it pops out like a little peekaboo right about there. This is so simple it's not even funny. But I want to show you my diagram with, that I'm going to provide to you in the more information of this video and it will jump you to the diagram that I decided to make for myself to make it easier. In today's tutorial too I'm going to show you how to make this even bigger just in case you don't want to swatch like this but you can make it any size that you want as long as you know the mathematics in order to do it. I'm a diagram reader and what I've decided to do is that I'm going to give you a copy of the diagram that I worked on for myself. Now what the more key thing is is that you're actually looking at two layers working together. So we're going to start off in doing our ovals which are our chain and the chains have to be done in groups of six. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six and you keep going until you get to the size that you want. Now I figured out that I'm going to need two chains at the beginning to do the edging and I'm going to need nine over here to do the edging on the other side so it's all properly. So what you have to just do is do multiples of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep going. When you get to the length that you want, you want to add another eleven. Okay, it says plus nine here, but that's plus nine and this two, which gives you eleven. So six, 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 all the way to the end, and then do eleven and so that you can do the starting so that you have it both balanced on both sides of your project. What we're also looking at here in this diagram is that we're going to be starting off with white and coming all the way back across with the white and then we're going to be picking up and doing the other color that you want to appear. See these V, uh, v kind of stitches here? This is that peekaboo color that you're seeing going out there. Okay, so what we want to do is do that and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to pick up the white and the white is going to come over top of the peekaboo area. So it's going to come over top and then it's going to let it peekaboo and then it's going to come and just bury it again. So that's just a very simple idea that you're looking at. So you just got to make sure, see how I put white? So white is coming across and then we do a white come back and then our peekaboo and basically the pattern repeats itself. If you're familiar with working with diagrams you'll notice that this is actually pretty easy to work with and of course you can print this off and make your own notes as well. So to start off with I'm just going to use a size 7 or 4.5 millimeter size G and then I could ju just use some Bernat Super Value just to demonstrate this for you. I'm going to keep this true to the swatch but again the tips that I'm showing you what to do in order to keep it balanced is up to you. So remember it's all in sets of 6. Remember the one on the hook never counts as 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and then 1, 2, 3, four, five and six. Okay, so then that means that you have two sets of peekaboos ready to go and just to keep it true to the to the actual swatch that I showed you that diagram I'm going to chain eleven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. And just to be clear you were doing in groups of 6 so you keep doing 6, 6, 6, 6, 6 all the way to the length that you want and then you just do one of 11 at the end so that it stays in balance so you have the most perfect borders ever. So let's move up to the next row. Row number 1 is very easy. We're just going to simply come back and we're going to count fourth from the hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Turn it around. Get the back hump. It's just easier to do and then you're just going to double crochet yourself all the way across your work. Okay, so just double crochet and so that chaining of uh, the extra 11 that we did at the end is being compensated by doing that four chain from the hook plus we want some bordering to be on both sides as well. So you just got to put some trust in me that I think I know what I'm talking about. So please double crochet yourself all the way back across this line for row number one. 
So I just came all the way across and I want to make sure that I'm ready to go and simply all I want to do at this point is that I want to pull up a loop on this one here. Okay and leave it out. You will want to put a stitch mark on here or a way to prevent it from actually being sucked back in. We are not going to be cutting yarn at any of these sides that we're going to, we're going to be building up on top of each other. What we need to do is turn our work but this time I want you to get your secondary peekaboo color. It could be a variegated, it could be anything. I'm just going to use a lime green and I'm going to create a slip knot just to start it off so that I can get a nice good finish to it. And what I want to do is that I want to insert it into the last stitch here. See this big loop? I want to leave it out of the way and I want to join it here. So I'm going to use both strands and just join. Okay. And what I want to do at this point is just chain three. So one, two and three and I want to double crochet into the next double crochet that's available to me. Okay, so just do that. We're going to chain two, one and two and what we're going to do down here is that we're going to um, jump over five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, go to the sixth and double crochet twice. Okay, this is going to be part of the peekaboo. And then once you have your two in there, you want to chain twice. So chain two times and then double crochet two more times. Okay, so you have like a V stitch there and then chain two. One and two and you then jump over another five. So one, two, three, four, five, go to the six and double crochet two more times. Chain two and then double crochet two more times. Okay, chain two. Now you could just count it over one, two, three, four and five and go to the last two or you can just trust in yourself and just go to the last two for a double crochet, one double crochet into each. Make sure you do get it into that last chain to be able to count. You're then gonna pull up on the loop Okay, leave it out of the way and like a typewriter we're gonna start back over here and we're gonna start on this particular loop and bring it across so that we can start burying in the peekaboos just like so. So first thing is first we need to put our loop onto the hook and we need to tighten that loop down. Okay, so let's tighten it down. Now the problem is is that you are all the way down here but we need to get this pink up to the top of this. So how are we gonna do that? We're simply just going to slip stitch our way to the top of that chain. So just slip stitching yourself. Could be more than likely three, it could be two. Whatever you think is at the top of that. Okay, that's about the top for me and so that was only two. So that's up to you. So if you can see that many stitches, great. What we're going to do then is that we're just gonna chain one and then single crochet into the same join there like so. And now we're going to chain two one and two and what we had down here in this pink row is that we have five empty stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. We want to concentrate in the three middle ones only. So you can just look at it and say oh there's a three or you can just count it and it starts at the second one over. And you're gonna go right over top of that green. So just wrap going in, push that peekaboo uh, chain down so it's all part of it and do that for three times. I kind of did that without really showing you but I'll show you again. So once you have your three in there, chain one and then just single crochet in between the two V's and then chain one. Okay, so here's your next five. Okay, just look for your second one over or look for the three middle. So wrap going in and push, and see how that automatically pushes that down and just double crochet so it pushes it down so you end up with a peekaboo. Now peekaboo isn't a technical term. It's what I'm calling it but uh, you, it does really just peekaboo. So chain one then once you have your three in there, single crochet to the top of the V stitch there and then chain one. And what we want to do is that we want to get ourselves back to the end so we still have another gapping space to fill in. So second one over. So I guess the, the real trick to this is just watch these loose uh, strings at the end. Just make sure you don't trap them under anything that they remain free and clear. So you're gonna get your th uh, third one over. Again I'm watching all the stragglers. 
once your sample gets a nice big size it gets easier too. And this time because we're on the end we wanna start off in chain two and then we're just gonna single crochet into the top. See how this is a big loop here? We want to go in the, in the same spot. Okay, where that's coming out of and we wanna single crochet and pull up a loop. So now both of the strands, the pink and the green are on the same side. So what we wanna do is now turn our work. Technically I shouldn't have actually pulled a loop up on that pink but I wanna give you a demonstration of why I did what I did. Okay, so let's move along to your next round. So what we're going to do is now is we're going to put a solid pink line in a pink row. So we're gonna put that pink on there. I technically should not have pulled a big loop. Okay, but I really wanna demonstrate to you that that's what I was doing just in case. So again, let's begin again and we're gonna start off with the white. And the white we're just going to chain three. One, two and three and we're just gonna double crochet ourselves across. Now remember how we chain two here? We're gonna put two double crochets into that chain two space. And then one double crochet into each one of the double crochets. And where it gets fancy, which is not a big deal at all, is right in the middle where the V-stitch is. So you know there's a chain one space here, there's a single crochet and a chain one space here. So you're just gonna fill it in. So just one single, uh, one double crochet in the chain one space and one double crochet in the middle of the single crochet and then one on the other side. Okay, so you're filling it all in and then each double crochet continuing. So as long as you can get that fact, it's, a, it's very easy. Um, you'll find this pattern is very easy generally. So just fill in all those spaces. So you can zip across these lines. Like so. We just have to be conscientious of the, of the edges to make sure that we're keeping those uniform. And that's why I provided you that graph or that diagram to be able to help you. Okay, so remember on the other side that we started off and I had you put two double crochets into this chain two space. Well you have two here as well because it's uniform on both sides. And then the final stitch is one double crochet into the single crochet right here. And pull up a loop. So now we're ready to take the green again to take it to create the peekaboos once again. So off camera I've already pulled my loop down. Now the problem is is that I'm way down here but my starting is way up here. So what I have to just do is I have to slip stitch myself to the top there. So just get myself slip stitch. I wanna slip stitch it to the actual chain itself not to any gapping spaces so it becomes that obvious. And of course you can put a border around your particular project as well and you need to get to the top like so. So now we're going to chain three. One, two, three, we're ready to go and we're gonna put one double crochet into this, the next one. So you already know how to do this, it's the same thing. But here's a cool little tip for you. You're going to chain two and you can either count it over and go one, two, three, four, five and then you go to the six. But look, if you follow the middle up, this is the six one. So you can either count it and waste your valuable time or you can just look up the other one that's there and just follow it up. Okay, so just two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets to create the new peekaboo for this one. And then chain two. How easy is that, right? So again, you can count it, one, two, three, four, five. You go to the six or you can just look up and just follow that one straight up. I love this pattern for that. It is, when you have key tips like that, it just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Okay, and then chain two and remember what we have to do in the end. The final two, you can either count it again, one, two, three, four and five. The final two basically have a double crochet in each. And that's how you do this stitch. So basically the repeat is basically what you already know. So you just have to turn your work and then use the pink, build yourself back up and then do the peekaboo like you already did down here. Okay, so that's how you would do this uh, particular stitch. It's actually really easy. It makes for a really cool idea. I love this. It looks like baby wallpaper in my opinion and it's a really kind of a fun stitch at the same time. Till next time, Mikey behalf, on behalf of Yarnspirations.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. We'll see ya.